This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Last year, Apple announced that it was working on a new way to get more Mac apps into the App Store, or just applications for Mac in general. And it all started with Apple making popular versions of its own iOS apps like the Home app, Apple News, and most recently, the Music, Podcasts, and Apple TV apps. The next phase of this project, which is titled Project Catalyst, is aimed at helping developers port over their iOS apps, specifically those designed for iPad, with a simple check of the macOS box inside of Xcode, at least as a starting point for further refinement. With the official launch of macOS Catalina, we now have some Project Catalyst apps available from third-party companies for your Mac, and so in this video, we're going to check out what's available and what apps are kind of worth checking out. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications whenever we share a video. As of right now, there aren't a ton of applications available, but if you head into the App Store, at the time of this video, there is a new section right on the homepage titled Apps You Love Now on Your Mac. From here, you'll see a list of many of the newly ported over iPad apps now ready to download for your Mac. I decided to highlight five apps that I've been using or at least trying to check out and give you a closer look at what you can expect. And the first app that I was impatiently waiting for was Twitter for Mac. Now, I'm a Twitter addict. It's really the only form of social media that I constantly check. And when Twitter removed its prior Mac app a while back, I wasn't too thrilled. But thankfully, we have the new and improved Catalyst version and it's Twitter. You have your navigation bar on the left-hand side where you can switch between different sections of Twitter for your mentions and messages, and then your timeline is taking up the rest of the app there. A lot of these apps are going to run similar to the iPad apps, but there are a few subtle differences between them. Twitter for Mac is based more off the browser version, however, than it is the iPad app, but it's still a great way to browse Twitter compared to another browser tab. The popular note-taking app GoodNotes 5 makes its macOS appearance, and it works really well on the big screen, except for one of the key features for iPad, which is being able to jot down notes with your Apple Pencil. There are tools for writing on the Mac version, but unless you're really good at using your trackpad or mouse to write out notes, that's probably not going to be much use for you. I could be wrong, but something like a Wacom tablet could be useful for you and could work with this app if you need to write something down. But nevertheless, having a Mac app version of this note-taking app and being able to write stuff down on your iPad and then see everything on your computer for reference, or if you wanna continue working on a note, is always a great thing. Another note taking app for those who prefer to use Markdown is Allegory, which is now available for Mac OS. This isn't an app that I've used a whole lot or really at all, but I do like the way it looks and I like the simplicity that it offers and some of the key stats that you see of your notes that are on the left hand side of the screen. I thought that was kind of cool. Creating a new note is really simple. There's a plus button in the top right corner. All you have to do is select that and it will begin a new note and you can just start writing. The iPad version has a helpful toolbar over the keyboard, but when you're typing with a physical keyboard on Mac OS, you can simply right click to access more of those options or those tools. Right click on your notes in the list view and it also gives you more options for setting due dates, bookmarks, etc. The iPad version is free with in-app purchases while the Mac OS version is actually $3.99, but it is a bit unclear, at least to me, what exactly you're getting that's different from the Pro version that's offered on the iPad. I think a lot of those features that are on the Pro version for the iPad might just need to stay with the iPad. It's not really super Mac OS compatible, uh, but it looks like you have a full version for $3.99 for the most part for your Mac. The next app is the popular weather app, Carrot Weather, which offers up some pretty accurate weather data due to its dark sky integration. And it's an app that I'm super happy exists on Mac OS. Now I can finally get notifications on my Mac when it's about to rain or if any other crazy alerts are about to happen. For those who have never used Carrot Weather before, not only is the weather app really well designed and kind of quirky, but the dialogue that the robot delivers to you can be kind of hilarious. It's a really good weather app, and honestly, it might be one of the best options available on the Mac. Finally, another good port over from the iPad to the Mac is the Rosetta Stone app. Now, this might not be for everybody, but let's just say you're planning a trip abroad or you just wanna learn a new language for fun, the Rosetta app on the iPad is actually fantastic, and it really carries over well to the Mac. It looks like a blown up iPad version. You can start with the basics and learn to associate these new words with helpful imagery. This is one of the best ways to learn a new language, but it not only helps you understand the language, but it also helps you speak it correctly too. 
Now that it's on the Mac, you'll be able to carry over your work wherever you go, and you won't be limited to a specific device. All of the apps featured, aside from a few subtle differences, are pretty similar to iPad app counterparts, and whether you like that design language or not, I think they work really well, and it's better than not having access to these apps at all on your Mac. Project Catalyst apps will be growing rapidly over the next few months as developers port over their apps, but let us know what your favorite new Mac apps are and what you think of the current ones that I mentioned in this video in the comments section down below. Before we end today's video, I do want to give you more information about today's sponsor, Clean My Mac. If you've updated to macOS Catalina or are thinking about doing it anytime soon, Clean My Mac X is the must-have utility for preparing a Mac for the update. Clean My Mac X deletes system junk, unseen apps, and hidden clutter from your Mac and giving you more storage space. Clean My Mac X can also help speed up your Mac not only by removing all of those junk files and programs from your system, but also by offering optimization and maintenance features like freeing up RAM, running maintenance scripts, etc. Clean My Mac also removes malware and adware agents and builds an interactive map of your Mac storage so that you can get all the information that you need at a quick glance whenever you might need it. Also, because macOS Catalina will not be supporting 32-bit applications any longer, which could be half of your app collection, Clean My Mac X automatically detects 32-bit apps, deletes them right away with all their parts and leftovers completely removed. And with the updater feature, you'll be instantly getting 64-bit replacements for your software if and when those apps are available. So click the link in the description down below to check out more information about Clean My Mac. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.